the What True Next podcast helps to build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they love for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next great read, then the show. Hi, Audrey. Welcome to What's Your Next Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I am a California girl. I live in sunny California, which is normally sunny, but it's raining. Yeah. Did you <laughs> so get snow? There's weird weather, so that's kind of weird. I read a lot. I'm a writer. I'm an avid crystal collector. So I'm just kind of like your resident Cali hippie. <laughs> I love this. So did you get snow like a few days ago? We did get ice, um, but I'm in Northern California. So my dad did an hour away and he got like four inches, which is like unheard of in in our area. And we got ice that, I mean, maybe it could have been snow, but I was working. So I wasn't really paying attention. By the time I took a peek, it was looked like, you know, hailed me. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, ice is more scarier than snow. So, you know, it's a more slippery slope than, than, you know. (laughs) Well, you know, with California, we're the kind of people that if you have bad weather, we stay in sight. (laughs) Yeah. We're like, oh, it's raining. We should, we should probably stay in. I feel the pain. I'm right now in Puerto Rico and I feel the pain because I feel like if it rains, because it's mostly sunny all year round. Yeah. And so if it rains, it's like, oh, is it like hurricane? <laughs> yeah. Know, like, right. we're like, like oh, we should get a hot cocoa and like sit by a fire. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, so I understand. So, all okay, right. So, Audrey, let's talk about like your writing journey when did you get started like what was what was the source like when did you start writing I celebrated my ninth anniversary publishing um on February 9th so not long ago oh my gosh and I um I was 34 when I released my first book I did this late in life I'm 43 now so it's like eight nine years and um I self-published because I didn't want to be rejected. I didn't want to worry about, you know, an agent or a publishing house um, not loving what I was writing. I was doing it for me. I wasn't doing it for anybody else. And I just wanted to challenge myself in a way that fit what I was into, which were books. And I read Fifty Shades of Grey. It totally changed my life. And I didn't even read it early. I read it late. I read it like two years later. And I'd always been to have a read it, but I was reading only suspenses and not really romance, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And then I read Fifty Shades of Grey and I was like, whoa, this was next level. I I connected with how I felt reading it as a woman in my 30s at the time. I really connected to that woman that was writing the story because she had two little boys at home and she was in the corporate world, which I was too. So I just kind of was like, you know, I'm going to try my hand at this. So I took writing classes online. Um, I, you know, reached out to my favorite authors and started sending things and like, hey, would you mind reading a chapter or two just to give me some feedback? And so I took a good like, probably a year and a half, two years to like hold my craft before I ever even released a book. And then when I released, I was self-pubbing for about, I think a year before a publisher reached out to me and said, you know, we love your work. We want to transition it to traditional publishing and put money behind marketing it and all of that. And we think you're just what we're looking for. And so I gave them my entire backlist and the next like 12 books that I had in my repertoire that I was planning to work on. And I did that for several years. And it was right in the middle of Calendar Girl, which is my probably my most successful series. Um, I had written six of them, six of the installments, the nine mm-hmm. novellas or the six novellas before we transitioned into publishing. So by the time that I finished Calendar Girl, writing it for a whole year, mm-hmm. um, four days later, I hit New York Times. So it was like the second it was done, everybody was like, I did it. <laughs> yes. And then my life changed from that moment because it went into auction internationally and it's printed in 37 languages. So I have had quite the career since then, you know, it's been a wild run. And now I wrote the marriage auction, which is a, a journey just in the, in the, the vein of Calendar Girl with Blue Box Press, who are some awesome badass chicks that know this industry inside and out and completely um, let work with the author to 
provide the best book possible. And I think that they are just an unusual and unique way to publish. And I'm really happy to be with them for the marriage auction. All right. So we got to talk about Kindavella because the marriage auction, it was like, it was a runway hit, like from Kindavella standpoint, which is, let's talk about the platform first, because okay. not everyone knows what it is all about and like okay. what the platform looks like. And then, then we can talk about the marriage auction, which is like what you can, you can yeah. actually enjoy. You know? So Kindle Bella is Amazon's version of serialized reading. So yeah. it's designed for the busy reader, the mom on the go, the college student, the the you know 18 year olds in class in between breaks it's really designed for a way to read serialized fiction so kind of imagine a soap opera and Mm -hmm. but you're reading it (laughs) and you get installments however often the author wants to distribute them so usually i do one to two episodes a week which i call them episodes but you would call them chapters Mm -hmm. and the chapters though to be successful on the kindle Velo platform you have to have a full scene that a person can read from start to finish and feel like they got something out of it. It can't just be this little scene that moves the characters forward. It has to be something interesting, you know, integral to the story, but also something that you can read in a bite size. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like having a snicker bar, a little Snickers after dinner, you know? You got your bite size dessert and you're like, ooh, that was perfect, just what I needed. And I write to that, system is each episode is something you can read from start to finish and not that you didn't have to read what came before you do it's a serial so it just keeps going everybody's books are a serial so you have to read from the beginning and keep moving and the way that that it's paid is they use it kind of like a phone game like when you're playing a phone game like candy crush or something you could buy bombs and things like this it's like that you buy tokens and so 200 tokens is maybe two dollars and those 200 tokens can buy you, you know, 2,000 words, essentially, which, or well, more than that, like 20,000 words, I think. So it's basically, I try to write my episodes in like 1,500 to 3,000 words. So that would either be 15 tokens. So it's one token per 100 words. Mm-hmm. And then I know it sounds really complex and complicated, but I swear to God, it's like so easy. And Amazon gives tokens for free all the time, especially if you have Kindle Unlimited or a Kindle Prime account. Yeah. In your account, they give you free tokens. So I've been given, man, thousands and thousands of free tokens. So I go use them to read all my friends' books. Yeah. But basically, you read as you go. A token might, you can kind of consider it like a penny. To me, it seems like it's a penny. So if you're mm-hmm. willing to pay 15 cents for something I've written, awesome. That's great. You know what I mean? It kind of works out like that. And I released when they very first opened it, which was July not last year, the year before. And I started writing it one at a time. Like I, to this day, I'm not ahead. I have written the episode that needs to go out this week. I'm already laid on it. It's you do what you can as a writer, you control the the schedule as a reader. That kind of sucks because you're like, Oh, when's the next episode. But for the most part, if an author is consistently posting one to two a week, you kind of you're like oh Mondays and Thursdays I get my new tv show I get my new written tv show and that's kind of the way I you know work in it all right so because you've been writing this for a couple years how do you going on two yeah July will be two years how do you keep track of all the different things that happen because well it's more (laughs) complex in some ways because you have to think about like you know the the what happened two years ago you know it is it's moving forward I that's kind of always the real writing has always been my thing it's like the first four characters I started with are two four females and then I added in the males the bidders so Mm -hmm. I have the you know candidates who are putting themselves up for bid to be married to a rich man, sight unseen for $3 million at minimum, but they can get up to whatever. It doesn't matter. I think one of them gets like 20 million and it's, you know, it's fantasy guys. It's it's not fantasy in the fantasy, like elves fantasy in the, you know, your mind made this stuff up and we're just going with it. It's fun. It's taboo. It's forced proximity. It's spicy. And what I did was I made it to where you got alternating points of view from the characters in a way that felt organic and felt natural so that you were learning the story along with each of these characters, just like a soap opera. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of easy to keep that going until 
I felt it needed an end. And I was like, okay, I've got these couples. I've already got them to their, their problems, their conflicts, family dramas, land dramas, you know, bad guys trying to kill people, planes blowing up, like all kinds of crazy stuff happens in the marriage auction. But then I was like, okay, I want to hit the end. So I want to say, I think it was at episode 140 was mm-hmm. when I finished that season one. And because of the way the Vela system works, if you start a story over for a season two, you have to rebuild your audience again from scratch. Mm-hmm. So instead, I just started season two continuing. So for the people that wanted to start season two, they can. New characters, new drama, new problems. And that's the way that it's been most successful for me. And it's great for the readers because they don't have to go anywhere to figure out where to find the Bellas. But once I did finish it, that's when I started looking for a publisher to put them in book format. So for the people who didn't want to read on Kindle Bella, they could have the books. And that's what you can, or you can't see it on here because we're on, we're online. <laughs> we're voice. But basically, I found a publisher, Blue Box Press. They love the concept. They love what I've been doing on Bella. And they want to take it to the next level, which is we put it in book format. So each book is 300 to 350 pages. Um, there's four of them. It's a serial. They're all out. They release January 24th, so you can binge read. And that's really what we were going for is the ultimate binge read. Mm-hmm. And so they're available, ready to go. And it's cool because they allowed me to keep it in Bella and in the book format. But the book format has 10% more content. So I wrote a lot of additional extra stuff just because I'm like, all right, if you're going to buy the book, you need more. You know, okay. you just need some more goodness, some more spice, some more, you know, heart, more heat, all of that. And I wanted to give something to those Bella readers who were like, okay, I'm going to buy these books because I want them on my shelf, but here's some more. You know, and they're like, yeah, okay, <laughs> good. I was going to buy them anyways, but now I get more. So that's kind of the way I did it. I love this. I love the fact that you're like, you're, you're figuring out a system that works for you that engages the reader, because I feel like as a reader, we are striving for those bingeable like series, like those series that are just going to keep us going that we cannot stop Absolutely. reading. You know, yeah. they're the perfect escape from it. And so yeah, marriage option is a perfect escape. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it really is. It's going to take you out of your life. And it's going to entertain you and teach you life lessons as well as you know, spicy times to get the yeah. heart pumping, you know, a little love, a little sisterhood, a little family drama. I mean, who doesn't want that? Yeah, I love this. All right. So for those who have not, who are new to it, what is the marriage auction? It's a marriage. It's basically the first season is four characters who bid to be in an auction to get married sight unseen, correct? Right. And- correct. And so I have a woman that's named Ruby who was grown up in a trailer park. She's a stripper, you know, that's kind of like the stereotype of someone who you would think would be in the auction, Mm -hmm. but her story is so good. She's doing it for her sister because her sister's a smarty girl. She's like, you know, straight A's, you know, she's protected her system, her sister from the horrors of her past. Her mom was just a really bad mom and she kind of grew up raising her, her sister. And so they live for each other. And that's why she's doing all this. She's doing this so her sister could get the best life and the best education possible for the talent that she has. And she ends up being bid on by two identical twin brothers that are English. I don't know why I decided to write an English (laughs) set of twins, because for real, they don't call anything the same. (laughs) You know, a sweater is a jumper. You know, the trunk of a car is a boot. Like you have to remember these things and really do do well with your research. And thankfully my marketing guy is a Brit. So I was like, Hey dude, (laughs) what is this? What would you call pants? He's like, we call them trousers. And I was like, Oh, okay. What do you call underwears? We call them knickers. (laughs) I'm like, Oh, all right. So I had that. Then I had faith who's on the run from a, um, her ex that she's been on the run for him for four years. She has a big secret that you know she's hiding from him she's also a guardian of her niece and um so her sister has drama she has drama her dad runs a restaurant italian family they love each other but this is some seriousness with this really rich guy and for her her logic for the bidding was what's the best way to get out from under one rich man is to get under a more powerful one and to you know give her dad the money that you know he needs to help take care of her niece 
It is crazy. It's like mafia wars with them. It's a whole thing. It's hoteliers that are battling. It's it's it gets nasty and crazy. It's very fun, and very wild, but it's it's very very much heart. And she, he's a single dad from Greece. So and his and he's a widower. So there's like all these like so many tropes that are fitting into each couple. Um, then I have two sisters that put themselves up for auction because which they didn't know it in the beginning. So you kind of find that out. And they are trying to save their family's farm in Montana. And so the farm that's next door to them that wants to take over their farm in their minds um, bids on them. So bids on one of them. And he's always been in love with her, but she hates them. He hates her. It's very, you know, enemies to lovers, very combative. Like Dakota is sassy as hell. You're never going to read a sassier character than her that you will fall in love with. Um, and then, of course, you've got the family drama, generations of of bl bad blood between them and the families having to come together and someone dies and it's a whole thing. And then we've got a Norwegian that picks up the other sister and she left her fiance to put herself in this in this mix. So their drama all happens. And so it's basically it's like all these people have these past. All these people have these conflicts. They all have things they want in their future. How does it come together in a way that feels fantasy, escape, excitement, thrillers, you suspense, spice, you know, and that's what I did. So it's basically the, the best soap opera you will ever, ever read. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. All right. So let's chat some book recommendations. What kind of books do you tend to read? Oh my God. Right now I'm hardcore into alien romance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I totally, I mean, it's weird. I'm reading alien romance. And thrillers right now. For some reason, I'm in that mode where I'm really into that new, um, newer author, Geneva Rose. She yes. wrote <laughs> The Perfect Marriage. I haven't read that one yet because I don't like to read things about marriage per se that might taint my view of it because I'm happily married 20 years this year. I just, it's a little, it's a little line I don't cross, but I loved the book, One of Us is Dead. Mm. It was so good, you guys. You have to read it. It, it does have even a little spice. And it's set around a uh, um, beauty shop where the main the main um, hairstylist and a salon owner has all of these clients that are socialites, but they're so evil and wicked to each other, but also kind of a sisterhood. Mm -hmm. It's really strange. And there's a lot of um, bad blood between some of them and behind the scenes money, money, money stuff happening and cheating happening and so you really, someone ends up dying and the whole book, you're trying to figure out who is going to die and who killed them. And you're kind of like, you start rooting for someone. <laughs> you're like, oh, I don't like her. I want her to go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I really recommend it. Highly re five-star read. Um, I love Ice Planet Barbarians. I love, I love, love, love Ruby Dixon's alien worlds <laughs> they're so beautiful and they're so well done and they're very like alphas and i love some me some alphas um and then you know babies it's all breeding and <laughs> it's very out of this world i'll give you that <laughs> this it's a it's a really like it's a really great escape like if you feel like men are the worst right now i was starting to i was in a group chat and they're like men are the worst and i was like just read some alien romance you know <laughs> yeah then you're like alien men are awesome <laughs> yeah they're fantastic they love the women they focus on the women they're like you know you are my heart you're my soul and I'm like yes you yes I am <laughs> yes you do it's all good it's preferred yeah. pleasure <laughs> exactly. I also am really into um Katie Roberts right now I read yeah. her monster romance books and then but I've also read her dark Olympus which mm -hmm. starts with neon gods Funny yep. thing, I didn't like Neon Gods nearly as much as I liked the three after. Like Neon yeah. Gods was good. It was good. It, was, it just I liked it enough to want to keep reading. But book two, Electric Idol, fantastic. Book three was a polyamory relationship, super good. I liked more the plot of that one because they had to like battle for who was going to like get this woman, Zeus's sister Helena. I think yeah. Helena. Yeah. And so it was a cool battle. And I just felt like it was like a, a, a Hunger Games kind of, um, you know, whoever wins Survival of the Fittest. I thought it was really cool. And then book four, Radiant Sin just came out. Dang, that was so hot. We got a curvy girl with her boss, Apollo. I'm like, okay, I see you. I see you being all hotsy-totsy. 
So yeah, I really enjoy that Dark Olympus series. I love these recommendations. So thank you for indulging me Absolutely. with them. Um, so tell us where you can find me online. Oh, you can find me online at Audrey Carlin, A-U-D-R-E-Y-C-A-R-L-A-N, Carlin. Audrey Carlin, if you search that up, you're going to find me. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, literally at Audrey Carlin, and you will find me. And AudreyCarlin.com, of course. Thank you, Audrey, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Laura. I had a great time. I hope everybody reads all the books, everything I've recommended, also the marriage auction. Woohoo! If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatyourrenextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading to your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Read Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libra FM for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code What to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the US. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.